Time now for our healthy living segment with personal trainer Eric Stratman from CrossFit ENG in Cape Coral. This morning, he's getting us more on the first steps you should take to start your exercise. And I just want to put it out there, Eric. I'm assuming the first step is not order Girl Scout cookies, eat some, and then maybe start your workout. So, uh, yeah, definitely. The Girl Scout cookies are, are, are a good step because that's uh, letting us know that, you know, we're going to stay gainfully employed because the Girl Scouts of America are helping all of us in the fitness industry be able to stay in business and, uh, you know, have a better 2021 than 2020 because, you know, we're out there, uh, you know, everybody's going to jump into those thin mints and tag alongs and not that I ever take partake in them, but uh, you, you definitely got to indulge sometimes in the, in the Girl Scout cookies, right? What are your guys' favorite flavors? Well, they're called Thin Mints for a reason. I'll just put it out there. And then also, uh, of course, the Samoas with the coconut. Uh, but this morning, <laughs> we're talking about kickstarting your, your exercise, yeah. especially for people maybe that are just getting back into it. Uh, I would assume, I know we've talked about it in the past, um, you know, you got to ease your way into some of the workouts. And I know you have some examples. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it, it, we talked about, you know, uh, you know, staying, you know, consistently average last week. And this was one of the things going on as people will come into workouts and, you know, we have uh, Anthony with us here and like he's going to, you know, he's going to demo a couple of things that people have that perception like, hey, we're going to do push ups. He's going to knock out five push ups and he's going to do it pretty easily. So you're going to see that this is something that, you know, most people are like, oh, hey, push ups. And he's going to hop right up and he's going to get up on our bar here. And he's going to do a couple pull-ups. So you're seeing, you know, Anthony here, and he's actually a great story of people that have, uh, you know, come a long way. Believe it or not, this guy used to weigh 300 pounds. I have to get you his before and after. The guy's got a great story. So he's going to come down now. In place of pull-ups, we've got ring rows, right? This is something that is a very simple pulling exercise to do that you would not think, okay, well, if I can't do a pull-up, then I shouldn't even do the workouts, right? I shouldn't even try something that's on there. Same thing with the push-ups. Thanks, Anthony. You can go come over here. We're going to switch over here, and you're going to see he's going to do push-ups on the box, which is a much easier version because we're able to take a lot of our body weight away from it. And I think these are those first steps people need to take in order to do it. Thank you, sir. Man, Anthony's a great guy helping us out here. And it, when we look at those first steps, those are some very minor modifications, but it's the same thing. Like, Oh, I want to run a 5K. Well, let's start out with a 10-minute walk a day, not let's go run a 5K. I didn't do really well at it. I was really sore from it. Let me not continue doing it. Let me make sure that you're putting yourself in a position that you could be successful because you're taking those first steps that are going to be successful and you're going to build one step a day. And that's what we call it, that first step. So you're able to always ascend towards your goal and give yourself a position that you're able to step on. What you did yesterday is building on what you're going to be able to do tomorrow, not try to go to the end goal immediately where a lot of people have that intimidation factor or that fi uh, failure. And then they see, well, it's something I can't do, so I'm not going to do it. Or I can't step into a gym or I can't start doing workouts at home because I'm going to fail at the workout. So just take that first step and be motivated to be able to do something that's going to enable you to start an exercise program stay doing it and maybe you can sneak in those thin mints and it's not going to bother you a bit. It's dangerous this year with COVID-19. Of course, they, uh, the Girl Scouts of America have an app so that you can get boxes of thin mints and cookies to probably even deliver to your home and then you can go out and find them. We always want to thank Eric Stratman with CrossFit ENG in Cape Coral for joining us this morning. 7.23 the time this morning, and it's time for our healthy living segment with personal trainer Eric Stratman from CrossFit ENG in Cape Coral. Yeah, and this morning he's getting us more on first steps you should take to start your exercise. Good morning. Oh, I love the pants. <laughs> good morning, good morning. <laughs> now this joke never... Yeah, good morning, good morning. Yeah, definitely I think first steps are... Uh... Oh, okay, the delay. This joke never gets old here, Eric. I just want to put this out there. They're called Thin Mints for a reason. It is Girl Scout <laughs> cookie season, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you can eat a box of Girl Scout cookies and not get back into the gym. And it's important, I know you're going to show us some exercises, some sim simple things people can do either in the gym or possibly even at home. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, we got Anthony joining us today. and We're going to go through some things. And we talk about first steps because too often everybody approaches their exercise and they see what pe other people are doing and whether it is, you know, they look at a CrossFit gym or they see people doing things online or the at-home videos and they're like, that's way too intense. That's something I can't do, so I'm not going to do it at all. And we talk about taking that first step of modification. So Ant's going to start out with squatting. So a lot of people think, okay, I've got to have some kind of external weighted load and he's going to start squatting and they're like, okay, yeah, this is definitely going to burn calories, definitely going to build muscle and help with what uh, we're trying to accomplish. But really we want to see that. Are we going to go unloaded? You know, we have an air squat and then you can go, yeah, go ahead. So you have just air squatting and then he's going to back up to the box. And then this is a benefit to see he's just doing squats to a box. Like this is where we can start. This is a first step that all of us can feel comfortable that we're not going to fall over, that we can get a good range of motion and do something that we do every day. We sit down and we stand up. So this is important to understand that this is a first step. And then one of my all time favorites, and I'm going to give you the calculation. You have to guess how many burpees it takes to burn one thin mint cookie, but burpees, right? <laughs> so he's going to do a couple of burpees and he is, you know, this is one of those exercises that we know burns a lot of calories. You can do it anywhere, but people look at these burpees and they say, well, man, that's something I can't do. We'll start off our athletes coming over to a box and then they're able to do a burpee. They're just stepping out. They're doing it with a pushup and then standing up and jumping or without the pushup because it's just where they're at in their fitness journey. This is one of those things that is going to give you that opportunity to have those first steps. Great job, Ant. We can just make him do burpees. I think he burned off a half a thin mint during that entire segment. So he did a lot, a lot of reps. But, you know, when you look at, you know, you got probably 10 to 15 burpees, depending on your body weight, to burn off a half a thin mint. So yeah, just yeah. put that in perspective. But I want you to indulge and have fun with them and, and enjoy them. Uh, yeah, it's 584 burpees for a large fry if you want to look at, like, what calories are and, you know, the, the work you're putting in. But we all burn plenty of calories with our, our resting metabolic rate every day. So it's in, we want to enjoy those Thin Mints. That's a first step. Eat the Thin Mint and then have motivation to go to the gym afterwards, right? Oh, Lord. 584 Y'all couldn't see my to face. burn oh, a large fry. That's incredible. That's crazy. It's, it's like, it, it's news, obviously, that, that you'd <laughs> like to hear because you're like, is, is the fry really worth it? Uh, but it's also extremely, you know, upsetting because who doesn't love I know. <laughs> McDonald's fry. We always want to thank Eric Stratman from CrossFit ENG in Cape Coral joining us this morning. Um, 584 burpees for a large fry. Calories don't count unless you count them, though. Okay, well, I'm counting them. Because every I know, time I, I eat too. fries that's, now, that's a lot. I'm thinking of nearly 600 burpees. Thank you so oh. much, Eric.